Welcome to Triumph IAS. It's a daily mains practice question and answer series. This program is exclusively designed for UPSC CSE aspirants. In this video discussion, we will discuss UPSC CSE mains previous 25 year questions. Question number 1. Critically discuss the objectives of Bhutan and Gramdan movements initiated by Acharya Vinoba Bhave and their success. Let's start with the introduction of the answer. When India gained independence from centuries old foreign rule the land ownership pattern was highly skewed in favour of big land loans. There were millions of landless agricultural labourers in the country who had no other source of livelihood. The main body of the answer should be Number 1. The Bhutan movement was started by Acharya Vinoba Bhave immediately after independence so that big land owners and zamindars could voluntarily donate their excess land to landless and marginal farmers. The objective of Bhutan was to reduce inequality in land ownership and to make Indian society more equitable. Number 2. Gramdan was an initiative where the entire village was to be persuaded to meet together and pool their land resources. It was a kind of community farming where each would then get his share in the produce as per his needs and capacity. While Bhutan was meant for areas where there was highland inequality in land ownership, Gramdan was meant for areas with low inequality. Number 3 Bhutan could succeed in getting vast amount of land redistributed, but when compared to overall cultivable area the success was not very enthusiastic. Corruption was evident in the big landlords and they transferred most of the land to their relatives or to get some kind of favour in return. Number 4. Only some thousand villages could come under Gramdan. This was due to its inherent nature that it could succeed only in areas with low inequality. Although both Bhutan and Gramdan were good in its intent, they had to face the attitudinal barriers and could achieve only partial success. Number 5. The enthusiasm for Bhutan ebbed away after 1957 and the idea of Gramdan did not prove to be popular in the non-tribal areas and this partly accounted for the decline of the movement at the end of the 1950s. The conclusion of the answer is However, it can be said that by adopting Gandhi's ideas of equitable redistribution among the landless, the Bhutan and Gramdan movements kept Gandhi's ideas of socio-economic reconstruction alive. Question number 2. Appropriate local community-level healthcare intervention is a prerequisite to achieve health for all in India. Explain from the resolution of contentious issues regarding distribution of legislative powers by the courts, principle of federal supremacy and harmonious construction have emerged. Explain? Let's start with the introduction of the answer. A critical component of the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals is health for all. However, despite a decade-long work under the National Rural Health Mission, a vast majority of Lindians remains out of the Heath Care for All umbrella. Moving on to the main body of the answer. Number 1. Health in India is a state subject. The public health expenditure in India is only about 3%, which is very low when compared to many European countries. Number 2. The National Health Protection Scheme, NHPS, announced by the Centre in Budget 2018 could potentially become the centrepiece to achieve universal health coverage only if the local community-level healthcare system is strengthened. Number 3. There is a long history of community-based services across priority programs in India. Community-based health services, CBHS, are best thought of as a subsystem of the overall health system, a tier between primary facilities and communities. Number 4. Community-based services have been an important part of successful eradication programs and in improving access to maternal and child health care, TB and HIV treatment. Number 5. Community-based health services, CBHS, will need to continue to adapt to a fast-changing India and the challenge of health for all. The conclusion of the answer is, it is useful to consider how community-based services are presented in national health strategies. 
Many national health strategies only feature CBHS as the end of the line for a variety of technical programs. Question number 3. What are the reformative steps taken by the government to make food grain distribution system more effective? Let's start with the introduction of the answer. Government is committed to provide food grains, wheat and rice at reasonable prices to the weaker sections of the society. Food grains are allocated to state UT governments for distribution under targeted public distribution system, TPDS, National Food Security Act, NFSA, and other welfare schemes, OWS. The main body of the answer is. Number 1. A number of initiatives were taken to make food grain management more efficient and to ensure food security in the country. Number 2. Aadhaar seeding in PDS to weed out duplicate ineligible bogus ration cards and to enable rightful targeting 83.41% i about 19.41 crore ration cards as on 29 May 2018 have been Aadhaar seeded. Under Section 7 of the Aadhaar Act 2016, the department has notified the use of Aadhaar to receive subsidized food grains or cash transfer on 8 February 2017. Number 3. Automation of fair price shops on the basis of pilots and learnings from the state's UTs in November 2014 Department of Food and Public Distribution prescribed the guidelines and specifications for use of POSAT FPS. At present 3,16,600 FPSs, as on 29 May 2018, out of 5,27,930 have POS. Digital cashless less cash payments in PDS, to promote the use of less cash digital payment mechanisms, the department has issued detailed guidelines for use of APS, UPI, USSD, debit rupai cards and e-wallets on 7 December 2016. Number 4. At present in 10 states UTs a total of 51,479 FPSs are enabled for digital payments. Apart from the above, 100% digitization of ration card data has been done, all states have transparency portal, 30 states have online allocation of food grains and 21 states UTs have computerized supply chain management system. The conclusion of the answer is New Central Sector Scheme Integrated Management of PDS, IMPDS. The scheme has been approved with an outlay of 127.3 crore rupees to be implemented during FY 2018-2019 and FY 2019-2020 for establishing public distribution system network, PDSN. To establish central data repository and central monitoring system of PDS operations and to also enable implementation of national level portability.